It was a cold, cold winter's night. In a cottage in the country, tucked away beneath the hills, a little boy lay sleeping. Snow began to fall, lightly at first, and then with giant flakes, which started to settle on the ground. At first light of morning, the little boy turned over, yawned, and sat up. He ran to the window and looked out. Everything was covered in snow. The garden, the fields, and the distant hills. He got dressed as fast as he could. When he was ready, he hurried down the stairs. and his woolly hat and walked out into the snow. First of all, he thought, I'll make some giant footsteps. Above him was a branch of a tree. He jumped up and swung on it. The snow from the branch fell all over him. Then he made a snowball and threw it as hard as he possibly could, straight into the kitchen window. You do something else, said his mother. The little boy wandered off, wondering what to do. And it was at exactly that moment he got the idea of building a snowman. of snow the size of a man and a great big snowball to go on the top of it. Then he fetched a scarf and a hat, a tangerine for the nose and coal for the eyes. standing all alone out in the middle of the garden. Indoors, the family sat round a nice warm fire. Very soon, it was time to go up to bed. Up the stairs he went, two at a time, into the bathroom to clean his teeth. Then hop, step and jump along the landing to his bedroom.
in the middle of the night he woke. Tiptoed to the window and peered down at the snowman, shivering. He went back to bed, but then the clock woke him. This time he got up and tiptoed down the stairs, feeling rather cold. He looked out at the snowman through the glass panels of the front door. Suddenly, while the boy was looking at him, the snowman moved. Then he actually started to walk towards the boy. He stopped and raised his hat. Then he walked forward again, right up to the boy. And they shook hands. Come in, said the boy. I'd love to, said the snowman. Together they tiptoed into the living room. The snowman thought it was wonderful. He looked at the cat sleeping peacefully by the fire and wanted to stroke it. But when the cat saw the snowman, he was terrified and leapt into the air. The snowman jumped backwards and lurched into the Christmas tree. Setting all the little bells ringing, the candlesticks shaking, and the fairy wobbling. At last it settled down, and the boy plugged it in. The tree lit up with every colour you could think of. Blues and greens, reds and yellows, gold lights, and silver lights. Then the snowman walked from the Christmas tree and sat himself down in a comfortable armchair. The boy turned on the television. There was nothing but fuzzy lines and zigzags, and it made the snowman dizzy. Then with a start, the boy realised that the snowman was sitting too near the fire. He realised that he might melt if he got too hot, so he pulled him out of the chair and hurried him out of the room. To the kitchen, which was cold and dark. The boy reached for the light switch. The snowman was curious. He wanted to switch it on himself. The snowman plodded over to the kitchen sink and the boy climbed up and turned on the cold tap. Then the hot one as well. A big cloud of steam rose up. Steam! It was too hot for the snowman and he backed away. He saw a cake with a tiny model snowman on it. He picked it up. And smiled at it. Then he took fruit from a bowl and tried on an orange for a nose. Then a lemon. A banana, then a cherry, and then a huge pineapple. But his own tangerine fitted best, so he put it back on. He leaned down and opened the fridge, and a waft of cold air came out. The snowman loved it! For him, it was just like sunbathing. Let's go upstairs, said the boy. Up they went and paused outside his parents' room. Someone was snoring. Be very quiet, said the boy. Shh! Look, false teeth, whispered the boy. The snowman wanted to try them on. He put them on and walked to a mirror to see how they looked. It gave him a terrible fright. Next, he tried out some makeup and looked in the mirror again. He looked into the wardrobe and saw all the clothes hanging there and some hats. 
He tried one on. Then he tried on some trousers. But the braces caught over his nose. Do be careful, said the boy. We mustn't wake them. A perfume spray stood on the dressing table. The snowman squirted it. He liked that. He did it again. Suddenly, the perfume made him want to sneeze. He held his nose. He mustn't sneeze in the bedroom. The boy hurried him out of the room. And then, he sneezed. In the boy's playroom was a music box. They wound it up and danced to it. They both collapsed onto the floor with balloons and teddy bears all around them. I've got another idea now, said the boy. Come with me and look out of the window. Outside they could see a strange dark object. Nodding to each other, they tiptoed silently down the stairs out through the front door and into the open air. The dark object seemed much bigger now and they were close to it and whatever it was, was covered up with a big black tarpaulin. Summoning up all his strength, the boy went up and pulled it off. Standing there was a bright, shiny new motorbike. The boy pointed out the controls to the snowman, turned the key in the ignition, turned on the headlights, and suddenly the snowman was on the bike and racing round the garden. For a second he stopped, the little boy jumped on behind him, and then they were off. snowman found his legs had started to melt from the heat of the engine. He was dripping all over the place, as if he'd just come out of the bathtub. At that moment, the boy had another bright idea. Grabbing the snowman's hand, he pulled him into the garage. Humming away in the corner was the big deep freeze. In a second, the snowman had jumped into the freezer, and in another second, the dripping had... stopped. The little boy watched him lying there and realised that an idea had come into the snowman's head. Without warning, the snowman climbed out of the freezer and gripping the boy firmly by the hand began to run. Out of the garage, out into the snow, 
out across the garden, faster and faster, bounding and jumping, until suddenly the boy realised that they were... flying! silently in the frozen north. They were in the middle of a great forest of pine trees laden with snow. But somewhere ahead they could hear music and see lights. There in a clearing in the forest a Christmas party was taking place and all the people at the party were snowmen. More snowmen than you could ever imagine in your life. And there Right in the middle of them, radiating good cheer and smiling from ear to ear, was Father Christmas himself. Ho ho ho, you're just in time for the dance of the snowman, he chuckled and he clicked his fingers.
When the party was all over, Father Christmas led the boy and the snowman to a stable. Light spilled through the door, and inside they could see the reindeer which he used to pull his sleigh. Father Christmas gave the boy a lovely blue scarf as a present, and he put it on. It was time for them to go. The snowman gripped the boy's hand, and once again they started to run. Faster and faster, bounding and jumping until they were flying! At last, they landed in the garden again, and together walked slowly to the house. The little boy shook hands with the snowman and went up to the front door. But the snowman waved, and the boy ran back and gave him a great big hug. Then the boy went indoors, and very soon was fast asleep. Next morning, when he woke, the room was ablaze with sunlight. He put on his dressing gown, ran downstairs and opened the front door. The sun felt warm on his face. The boy ran out into the garden and saw a little heap of melted snow, an old hat, a tangerine, a scarf and a few lumps of coal. But the snowman was nowhere to be seen. For a moment, he thought that the adventures of the night before had been nothing but a dream. But then he felt in his pocket, and the scarf that Father Christmas had given him was still there! <laughs> <laughs>